Howard Stern comes again, Mr. Howard Stern. Circling back to what you said, what makes a good interviewer and why, why did I write this book? You know, there's a certain thing that happened for me. I went into psychotherapy, which I used to kind of laugh at and think, oh, I have it all together. I know what's going on. And I equated my success with that I'm fine. Everything's good. But I had gone through a divorce. I have three young daughters at the time. And I, I pushed myself into the psychotherapy. And I got to tell you, I am a poster boy now, especially you, sir. You need it. I, <laughs> I am the poster boy for psychotherapy. Uh, I, I think it's terrific, and I got in touch with a lot of things about myself I didn't like, mm -hmm. and it was, it, you know, it was quite a journey. But what happened for me was that when I sat in this psychiatrist's office for the first time in my life, here was another adult, a man, listening to me and actually treating me seriously. The first time I went in to see this guy, I just, from what I saw on TV, you go in and you talk about your parents. So I start doing elaborate routines for the psychiatrist. Like you're entertaining him. Like I'm, like I'm doing a radio show. Sure. I said, oh, my mother, she's like, listen, you are doing too much. We only tell you to do one thing a day. That's right, your mother and I do one thing a day. And let me tell you, you do, I see you running around and you're on TV and uh -huh. radio. What is you doing it for? It's too much and what's it all mean? And you're gonna get yourself sick. <laughs> and what's with all this running around? So I'm telling the psychiatrist and he's sitting there like I'm bombing in the room and he's not laughing. <laughs> and I go, you know, I get paid to do this stuff. Sure. He, well, he said to me for the first time, I don't find any of this funny. <laughs> I, th I go, great. I, I, but he said, <laughs> in fact, I see that it's rather sad. And I, I was like, really? What do, what do you mean? I, mm -hmm. I didn't think of myself that way. Mm -hmm. And then we got into some real discussion. And I craved it. I never had that kind of attention. I never had that kind of focus. Are you ever tempted? Do you ever find yourself sort of, as a, as a performer, slipping into performance mode when you're in therapy? All the you time. You have to check yourself, like, oh, no, this is not, I'm not here to perform for this person. I'm here to be selfish for myself. He's very astute, the psychiatrist. He'll say to me, I don't sense you're in the room right now. I get a lot of that because I do slip into a performance. Sure. So, you know, I, think, I feel bad for him. I think I'm a very difficult person to have in psychoanalysis right, right. because, I mean, I do slip in and out, and I'm testing the therapist all the time. What do you mean? I'll what sit testing? there and I'll, I will purposely slip into a story or something to see if he catches it. And he does every time. He knows. <laughs> and, uh, and you're monologuing. I'm monologuing. Like a supervillain. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so what happened for me is I said, you know, wouldn't it be interesting? Now I'm on satellite radio. I can do whatever I want. People are expecting me now to be more sexual than I've ever been. To sit there and I don't know what I make like maybe hang people upside down from the rafters naked or yes. whatever it was. You 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 actually had some some fairly extreme stuff when you first went over. Very extreme, but yeah. to me that was outrageous for terrestrial radio. Religious groups were against me. The FCC, want, the Federal Communications Commission, wanted to keep fining our radio stations, and that was punk rock. That was revolutionary. Sure. That was insane. Right. You need you, you need the friction. Yeah, but if you get to satellite. What is it you want to do with this medium? And I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if I could get some really accomplished people, fabulous people to come in and sit down and have a real conversation with me? I've been very honest over the, year, the years with my audience. Um, you know, for everything from penis size to uh, sexual habits to gas, you know, I mean, whatever it is I talk about. And the wouldn't big it be, three. The big three, you, you know, you, you do the same thing. You're having, who Big you having, two, small one, I'm who sorry. You having, uh, who are you having on tomorrow night? Kamala Harris. Kamala, Kamala Harris. Harris. You got to hit the fart stuff. You got to hit the, you know. I'm not going to ask her how big her penis is, however. <laughs> She's got a big penis. I'm not going to do it. I certainly think she has a bigger one than me. But, you know, I, I have to tell you that uh, sitting there uh -huh. with guests yeah. and actually having some real conversation has been the most rewarding part of my career. And, and getting accolades for it and having this book, this is why I'm out promoting it so much. All right, we have to take another break, uh, but don't go away, because when you come back, I'm going to ask Howard about Donald Trump and all the times he spoke to him. <laughs>